Uh, what do you make of your opponent, Hausch Manfio? You were obviously supposed to fight Alex Martinez on PFL4, and then you had this opponent switch. What do you make of your opponent? Um, definitely different style. You know, watching his last fight, you know, his hands are a little more active than my last, the guy I was supposed to fight, um, coming from that Taekwondo background. Um, so, you know, just small adjustments. I think, honestly, what, what I've been doing is perfect. You know, I've been focusing on my boxing, my basics. Um, when we get in that, when we get into that uh, fight, you know, I, I got to watch his boxing, honestly. So, yeah, I think um, I'm doing the right things. Awesome. Good luck, Anthony. Thank you. Okay. Hey, this is Algebra from the Fight Dialogue. Uh, congratulations on your uh, your uh, baby girl, man. Talk to me about that experience. How was your Father's Day? Um, you said talk to you about the, the baby girl? Uh, yes, and how was your Father's Day overall, too? Oh, man, it was an amazing Father's Day. So we set it up so I could make my my last fight. So we, she was going to be born on that Monday. So I, we already knew, you know, her, her birthday and everything coming into it. But uh, I got sick right before that uh, last press conference. So, you know, I had to pull out. And, you know, it's God's plan. You know, honestly, everything worked out perfect. My daughter's healthy. And, uh, you know, I'm back here and right back to work. And uh, how are you health-wise? You know, you say you got sick last time. So how are you feeling from the last time? Man, I just got how sick right, right before the press conference. Um, before we were going downstairs, I, my stomach was feeling like sour. Um, you know, then we went down to the press conference. You know, I did the square off. I'm like, yo, I'm not nervous. You know, I've done this so many times. There's no way I'm nervous. Went back to my room, started throwing up. And, uh, you know, I had to call it because uh, yeah, I think it was like a stomach bug or a, a flu or something, something. I don't know. I was like, I just didn't feel right. Um, and once I started throwing up, there was no way I could recover from that. Well, glad to see you healthy and congratulations again and uh good luck to you on friday thank you man hey anthony this is uh curtis calhoun with low kick mma my question for you is uh what was it like to see your brother sergio get the belt in uh, bellator and uh, how awesome is it for you to be on the same fight team at this stage in your careers oh man you know i started this sport you know you know with no one to follow and then you know i bought in my little brother and, uh, you know, my mom tell me, like, he's your responsibility. You know, whatever, whatever happens to him, it's on you. Um, so, man, every time I watch his fights, I'm, I'm more nervous for his fights than my fights. And uh, to see him, you know, achieve that goal, becoming the champion, he's actually here with me right now. We didn't get into, like, 2 a.m. last night. Um, we've been through so much together, man, the highest highs, lowest lows. And to see him where he's at right now, you know, it's, it's amazing, man. Like, uh, everything I, I, I wanted to happen for him is happening. So, you know, I'm definitely blessed. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate it. Thanks. Kelsey. Hey, Anthony, congratulations on the baby, first of all. Super excited for you. Um, what's it like? Like, you're going into this fight. This is the first time in your life that you're going into a fight that you know you need a finish to go on to what you want to do next. I know you knew kind of theoretically that was going to happen before, but now it's here. What's the, what are your thoughts and feelings about that? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a little bit um you know nerve wracking where you're thinking about you know I need to finish. Not only do I gotta win, I gotta finish. But um based on my last performance, man, like I'm putting that on myself. Like I know I need to finish. Whether there was points involved or not, like I didn't like how I looked my last fight, and uh, you know I took that personal. I went back. I I went to work and uh I fixed little details that I needed to fix. You know I forgot that uh you know Aaron Rodgers still has a, a coach that shows him how to grab the ball properly like there's the things that you got to have reminded on a daily and uh you know, I feel like I detached from that a little bit in that that first camp um and this camp you know I'm just I'm just back to, to having fun with the, the process you know I, I really focus in on my boxing I think in this uh this style of fighting uh hands are very important so I definitely focused on that um and I think I'm gonna show it uh coming this, this Friday I think before your last fight was scheduled you were um your baby wasn't born and then you got sick and the baby was born anyway I was thinking is it make it easier to go in into the cage? Because what I was thinking was maybe when you get in the cage and your baby isn't born, maybe the whole time in there in the back of your mind, you're like, is my wife in labor? I don't know, right? So tell me about that. Is that true? Or do you not yeah. think about stuff like that? Well, definitely true. Yeah, so we had, to, we had to come out here 12 days for quarantine. And, you know, my fiance was pregnant. We, we had the date set for Monday to, for, her to, to, for my daughter to be born after my fight. Um, but, you know, you never know. Like, she can come whenever she wanted to come. So that was definitely in the back of my mind. Like, you know, if I'm out here missing my daughter's birth, imagine explaining that. Like when she's 16 years old, like, yeah, um, I was quarantined for COVID and I was fighting in a tournament. So I missed your birth. You know, this is a crazy thought uh, going through my head. But uh, she's here now. She's healthy. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back focused and, and ready to fight. Thanks. MMA locker room. Okay, welcome back, Bree. 
Hey, Anthony, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. First off, I just want to say visibly, you do look a lot healthier, so that's good to see, and uh, we're excited to see you perform. Um, but I wanted to ask, you know, you touched on it. You've been working a lot on your boxing. We've seen you in that old-style gym. Uh, how has that worked in your camp up to this fight, and uh, what, what reinvigorated the passion for the hands? Um, just the last fight, you know, I went out that last fight and this, uh, this floor that I'm fighting on is a little slipperier than what I'm normally used to. And, uh, you know, I, I felt it when every time I kicked, I was slipping. So I, I, that was one of the big things I had to adjust. You know, I was like, you know, if I'm slipping on my kicks, I got to fix you know, that approach to it. Um, and then obviously the, the first guy I fought, his hand, the level of his hands was uh, different than I expected. So, and I focused on that right away. You know, I took that upon myself. Like the way I, the way I looked in that fight, I just didn't like it. You know, I felt like I was sloppy. I was making bad decisions. I'm way better than what I showed out there in that fight. So I had to go back to the drawing board like I always do and uh, get right back to work. Um, and this time around, you know, I'm in Vegas. My daughter just was born. I have a lot of guys in Vegas that I train with boxers, you know, MMA guys, kickboxers, jiu-jitsu, everything out there. But um, for some reason, you know, uh, the, I couldn't find a good boxing coach to like take me in and like show me the way for mixed martial arts because if I go with boxing coaches they, they teach me boxing drills and stuff I found a guy who's teaching me the Cuban Mexican style that I'm looking for to finish finish guys but also keep that range and um man I'm loving it you know he's, he plays the salsa music while we're training got the whole vibe in there um Tyson Fury's actually in camp with me um well he's in camp doing his camp so um you know, I see his work process so it's, it's a great great environment great uh atmosphere to be in and um no, I'm definitely blessed to, that, that, you know, George allowed me to you know, be part of his team. Right on. We're stoked to see you perform. Thank you. All right. MMA locker room. Uh, you're coming out that room and you're walking into the octagon. Uh, what's going on in your mind? Like, uh, are you ready to kill? Are you ready to put on a showtime performance? Or what's in the mental state of Anthony Pettis when he comes into that ready to fight? Yeah, it's crazy, man. That's a good question. I mean, I, I missed the first part of the question, but I heard the, the end of it. So, um, you know, my mindset going into these these fights, it just it just depends on who I'm fighting. Like this guy just said he's gonna knock me out. I I, I was watching. Uh, I think my fiance sent it to me. It was like, yo, this this guy said he's gonna knock you out in, in the first or second round or something. Um, that makes me motivated. I mean, things like that, just little little things like that. Like, dude, I've never been touching like dropped in this octagon i've never been my finishes like my my losses are from decisions most of my losses are from decisions so it's like that right there motivates me to go kill but sometimes you know it's like i want to put on a show last fight i was trying to put on a show and you know that that's that's what my, the performance looked at that so trying to find that that right uh the right mindset to go in there and and not only put on a show kill but also win is uh the process all right yeah i can hear him Hey, Anthony, Drew Pierce, fightleap.com. Going back to kind of your game plan going into this bout, obviously you're very aware of needing that finish to keep this going, but how much does that really play into your game plan or is it kind of steady no matter the circumstance to go in there and just do your job? Yeah, I just go do my job, man. I got to find the range. I got to find, I got to find my, my flow. And once I, once that happens, then the finish will come. If I go in there and put the finish before that part, then it's not going to happen. Thanks and best of luck. Thank you. Dylan? Hey there, Anthony. Appreciate you making some time. Of course. I was just curious because, I mean, just so many different facets you've been involved with in the MMA space. It seems like also getting into some management stuff has been some recent, you know, efforts on your part, Showtime group and everything like that. Can you talk about sort of that aspect of what you're doing and expanding into that part of the MMA space? Yeah, you know, I started uh, Showtime Group a while back. We're just actually putting it in the public now. Um, we did our first combine. We got about like 50 guys signed on me from amateur to professionals to you know, higher level pros. Um, you know, I, the reason why it happened is my, my little brother and the guys at my gym, you know, I see these these talented athletes coming up through my gym. I'm training with them. We're, ble we're bleeding, sweating, you know, trying together. And then I pass them on to different managers that I was part of. And I've, I've had so many managers. Um, but I pass them on to these managers and I'd see what they're getting from the managers as far as like a support. And, you know, I, I think I can do it better. And especially if they're homegrown guys. So that's where the Showtime group started at. And then uh, once we started, we saw that flow and then we started going, you know, we saw the market that space that, you know, we, we can do this good. And, um, you know, our, my Showtime fights shows coming up in October. I got another boxing show in December. 
Um, it's just just making a full circle again, you know, giving the guys an opportunity like I had. Like I came up fighting in a Harley Davidson dealership in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That was my first fight in a Harley Davidson dealership, and uh, you know, look where I you know took it to. So I think uh, me do going back and going back to Milwaukee first and putting it in there, giving these guys the opportunities, building my team up. Um, I'm gonna be around MMA for the rest of my life. You know, this is what I love to do. This is my passion, and uh, it's another another avenue for me to to be part of the sport. Yeah, it really illustrates that you're a student of the game, and I appreciate you providing those insights, Matt. Thanks. Steve Irvine. Hi, Aaron. It's uh, Steve on behalf of MMA Lowdown. First of all, congratulations on becoming a dad. Thank you. So I just want to ask, if you defy the odds and win this fight in the first and then go on to win the tournament, this is going to be another big add to your legacy. Now, at this stage of your career, do you see yourself retiring at the top after this? I couldn't hear you. Taking it to where? Do you see yourself retiring at the top after this chapter, after adding such a big win to your already prestigious legacy? What word is he saying? I don't even... Oh, no, no. Retiring? No, not at all. I, I thought you said the title. Um, no, nah, retirement, man. Like, I feel like I'm only 34 years old. You know, retiring, you know, I'm getting better, too. Like, if I now that I'm going to these boxing gyms and, like, finding new coaches, like, I can feel the growth. Um, retirement from this sport, like, I, I don't think I'll ever lay my gloves down and be like, I, I'm done with this sport. This is my life. This is what I put everything into. You know, I miss so many holidays and so many family events for this sport. And, and, uh, this is what I do, man. This is what I, this is what I love. And uh, I don't, I don't see myself retiring anytime soon. No, oh, that's good to hear. And it's going to be a pleasure watching you. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, Stage Side Press. Hey, Anthony. Um, so you 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 lost your PFL debut, but um, people not people might not remember that you lost your UFC debut as well, and then you went on a five fight win streak to win the title. Um, I guess, I mean, it, is that the mission to uh, go on a streak this next and fight? The, the mission was to not not lose again, but you know things happen, man. And I think um, you know in this sport, it's different than any other sport. You know, you're, you're by yourself. You you don't have a team that's in there with you. I mean, you got your team that gets you ready, but like, it's all on you. You know, if you, you go out there and you have a bad fight, that's, it's, you know, it's your, it's your, it's your, it's your fault. It's not no one else's fault. And um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, try, trying to um, figure out what mindset, and the question before it was good. Like the mindset going into the octagon, I mean, in the cage is like very important. You know, what, if I'm going to put on a show, if I'm trying to kill this guy, if I'm trying to finish him, I got to calm myself down to be like, all right, let me, let me build the process up. Cause that's how I did it back then. So yeah, I'm, I'm going back to like, you know, Duke even mentioned that like you lost the clay Guida. We, we won that title, man. Let's, let's, let's go back to work. And, um, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, it, I, I've been here before. That's the best thing to say is I've been here before. I know what I need to do and, um, I've done it. I just had a quick follow up. Um, did I see that you were starting your own, um, promotion as well? Kind of like what, uh, Jorge Masvidal is doing. Yeah, yeah, I already have. Well, we already had a, a fight promotion. I came up in my own fight promotion, actually. So I, I promoted, me and my coach promoted my earlier fights. It's called Gladiator Fighter Series. We stopped doing it for a while just because of, you know, COVID and where my career was going. But now we're bringing it back and we're changing the name Showtime Fighting Series. Um, so it, it's kind of just a continuation on of what Duke, you know, made in Milwaukee. And I just, I felt passionate about it because there was really, really no place for my fighters to fight in Wisconsin right now. And, uh, you know, now that everything's going back to normal, it just it's, it does it makes sense. So yeah. Thank you for it, Stephen at Tesco. How can I help? What? Awesome and good luck. <laughs> All right. Last question, Suki. Thank you. Nice to talk to you, Anthony. I wanted to actually touch on the YouTube show you started. So everyone's really getting into your own YouTube channels, things like that. Saw, saw the first episode, got a couple more to watch. So if you could just plug that, I'd love to know more about it. Yeah, man, it's just uh, giving uh, the audience more access to you know my training camps in my life. You know, I think um, you know that now that I'm that I started that I got Showtime Group going and flowing, I see how important that is. You know, so I'm I'm trying to be like the, uh, the I'm I'm doing all the trial and error on myself to to show my fighters like how it works. And um, you know, we're we're new to it too. We're we're just we're just getting it going and make, having fun with it. But yeah, I think um, the more content you can create, the more eyes get go upon you, and, and the more people want to watch you fight. So that's just just all flows together. <laughs> 